Hello and welcome back. Welcome back uh, to the surviving the apocalypse making vehicle. This is um, this is a survival vehicle, as a car that will survive uh, the future. A car that can that, that that the military can use, or you can buy it and you can keep it. You can modify it when the apocalypse comes, when the zombies are approaching, and. Uh, Maybe in the future, where well, everything will get destroyed, or maybe the the Earth will stop, or whatever, whatever apocalypse will happen, this car will survive. Because in this video, I received an amazing, an amazing requested video by Mr. David Hamilton uh, on the Snapchat group, on the channel Snapchat group, and he told me to make a car that is that is extremely reliable, extremely torquey and very very easy to fix when of course the apocalypse happens because, because in the future when the apocalypse arrive you will not have any kind of spare parts and of course the, the main idea of this car is to run on cheap fuel on extremely low, uh, low, low quality low uh, octane uh, fuel so basically any, any, any fuel you will, you will find not diesel, no, any petrol you will find, you will just feel, refill it and job done. Turning on, just start the engine and just keep on going and going. So as you can see, it's very it's very tough from the, from the looks of it. It's very re reliable, it's very dependable as you will see later and it can go absolutely anywhere. So before we start with the specs of this beast here, I would love to remind you, uh, please if you enjoy the video, remember to hit that like button to get subscribed if, if you are new to the channel and of course uh, to hit that notification bell button so you can get a notification each time I release a new video. And if you want to request a video, I will tell you at the end of the video. At the end of this video, so let's start with the specs of this beast here. We have a corrosion-resisting steel uh, panels or body because, well, I'm, I'm not gonna use aluminium or carbon fiber or any kind of really expensive materials. I'm gonna, I want to keep it simple and very reliable, and I don't want this car to rust. So corrosion corrosion-resisting steel is the best option to go with for the body. Since it's a pickup truck and I want this car to carry or this turn this vehicle to carry heavy loads in the rear, uh, the the obvious choice for a chassis is of course a light truck monocoque chassis because I want to have the idea of a modern lightweight safe monocoque chassis in the front and a heavy and heavy duty ladder chassis for the bed on the rear and this and, and this option will combine the two worlds or the two worlds of chassis in a one in a single chassis which which is my main purpose of this car and my main goal so as you can see the materials are very simple i also want to use a steel also for the chassis but not regular steel so light light advanced high strength steel so this steel is very very stiff very very safe and very light at the same time and that's the base that's the best thing you can have it in, a, in any kind of steel stiff safe and light at the same time uh, the engine placement is very obvious a, a front longitudinal engine placement solid axle coils as you can see in the front and sol solid axle coils in the rear because solid axles are very reliable uh, very cheap to, to mend and of course very easy to fix and they will live forever and they are very very reliable and dependable they can actually you can use them like forever and the only thing is that you need to change like the springs uh, maybe if you have a, a leak in the front from the front differential these joints here this is the front sway bar easy easy fix it and easy to maintain very cheaply to to fix also in real life before the apocalypse also so as you can see very very obvious reasons uh, before uh, to be honest with you when i started making this video i went with solid axle leaves because leaves are even more simple they are simpler even simpler than regular than the coils because there are there are no springs only leaves and leaves they will live forever truly forever if you if you use the car or the vehicle like very normally nothing crazy they will live forever I promise you this you can see a lot of classic cars like with, with suspension parts from the 80s from the 70s nothing broke on them even just tiny things tiny uh, tiny bits to be to be fixed nothing major and you can see the same original parts from back then because if you if you go gentle if you drive the, this vehicle normally even if you want to go off-road they will live and that's the whole purpose of solid axles. If you, if you went with coil, you will have more comfortable ride because of course of, of the springs. 
you will have, as you can see, uh, of course, the, both of them are heavy, but with coils, you will get more more sportiness value, more, comf more comfortable value, and as you can see, uh, actually, and more off-road. So going off-road with coils is better than going off-road with leaves. That's very cool. Although the leaves can carry more cargo, but the coils, they can also carry a good amount of cargo, but the leaves are good for carrying and uh, hauling good amount of cargo on the rear. So it's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to your to your purpose of the vehicle. I want to keep this keep this vehicle very comfortable, uh, very very reliable, and it can go off road. It can it can put heavy stuff in the bed easily. So coil coils are the best option to go with. Plus two quality because well I can make this cuff. I want to make it super high quality. Yes I can do that but I want to keep it cheap and simple. So plus two that means the chassis and the suspension uh, designs are reliable, dependable and they are very very good uh, and they are not bad. The, the chassis is not, it, it will not flex, it will not bend, it's very uh, heavy duty so plus two quality seems a good option. Moving on, this is the engine in question. It's a very very simple uh, inline six engine, made from cast iron, of course. Uh, 100 millimeter on the bore, 120 millimeters on the stroke. As you can see, maxed out stroke. Because I want to, the whole purpose of this engine is to make torque. We don't need so much horsepower. We only need torque. We need so much amount of torque, and we want to keep it simple. Because if I want to make a torquey engine, it's easy. It's easy. Just Slap on a turbocharger, some boost going in, and you will have tons and tons amount of uh, of torque. But putting a turbocharger, that means you will have uh, boost lines, vacuum lines. You have you will have oil lines going through the engine, and all of this is not reliable. Anything, a lot of things can go wrong, and you will have blow, a blow of valve sensors. It will just be unreliable. I want to keep this engine very, very simple and very, very normal. So cast iron block, direct acting overhead cam, also for the same reason because direct acting overhead cam is much more reliable, much, much better than a regular push rod system, and it's extremely reliable com comparing it to a regular overhead cam or a dual overhead cam. It's still very powerful. It's still very torquey, very, very reliable, and. I mean, yes, I know these two these two options will offer more power, more torque, but they are re less reliable, and they will a lot of things in them can go wrong. Unlike the direct acting overhead cam, it's very very simple. I mean, really, really, really simple. Let me show you. I mean, look at it. Just a, a stupid regular cam. Really, look at it. Just a, a regular normal cheap camshaft with loops on them on it pushing as you can see the head of the valves with springs under them very 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 simple very very reliable as you can see nothing can go wrong here nothing and that that's what that's my point here and that's what mr. D mr. David point uh, for choosing direct acting overhead cam uh, so let's move on as you can see no VVL no not no any kind of technology because for the same reasons uh, I want to keep the engine very 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 simple Forged steel crankshaft because forged well this, it's much much more uh, reliable much more uh, much more stronger than a regular cast iron crankshaft that's why I went with forged steel crankshaft the same reason heavy duty forged connecting rods because I want I want the engine to run forever so heavy duty forged is much much better than a regular heavy duty cast piston uh, connecting rods. As you can see, there is there is no option like uh, a heavy duty forge, so I went with the regular forged pistons because, as I mentioned, a forged uh, a forged pistons is much much more uh, stronger and more reliable than a regular cast or a regular heavy duty cast piston. Uh, moving on, we have plus five quality. So yes, these are not regular internals; these are heavy heavy duty and uh, high quality internals so they will I, I think they will live forever so we have 9.0 to 1 compression ratio very good compression ratio 44 on the cam profile no VVT for the same reason keeping the engine simple zero quality naturally aspirated and we have a direct fuel the, the direct or direct fuel injection single throttle body standard intake manifold to be honest, when I, start, when I started making the video, Mr. David requested a mechanical fuel injection because a mechanical fuel injection uh, uses a mechanical 
fuel pump which will make the which will make the engine more reliable, more easy to fix, and build, well, you can find any uh, you can find a, a lot of spare parts even when the apocalypse happens. And of course, you will not have any kind of of any kind of sensor in in the engine, which will make the engine much more simple to work on. But unfortunately, if you want to run if you want to run low quality 80 octane fuel, I need to push the compression ratio like all the way down to 6.3 to 1, 6.2 to 1, which is super super low compression ratio to run mechanical fuel injection with 80 octane fuel. And that was a bit of a problem. I mean, yes, I I, I, I can accept the, an engine with an extremely low amount of compression ratio if, if the engine is powerful. And yes, I achieved good amount of horsepower on extremely low quality, on extremely low, low compression ratio with mechanical fuel injection. But when I switched to direct fuel injection, uh, the engine got more reliable, more economical, more uh, more efficient, and of course, um, I could have pushed the engine. I, I, I had the option to push the engine with more compression ratio, more ignition timing, to make it even more powerful. And that's why I went with direct fuel injection because it's super reliable compared to mechanical fuel injection in automation game. I'm not talking in real life, I'm talking in automation game, so that's why I went with it. 13.0 uh, is the is the comp is the air fuel ratio, which is a little bit too high. I admit that, but in direct fuel injection, 13.0 is just normal, because as you can see, max air fuel ratio is 11.8, and right now it's 13.0. Oh, so it's it's normal. Four is the ignition timing. Yes, it's very very retarded, and because for an obvious reason, right now I'm maxed out. I'm using all of the available octane fuel, and Mr. David told me uh, not to exceed 13.0 on the fuel mixture. That's why I kept it 13.0 for four on the ignition timing and 9.0 to 1 is the compression ratio. 5,800 is the RPM limit with plus three quality. We have a short cast header, single exhaust pipe, 3.5 inch exhaust diameter. I admit it, it's a little bit too high, but uh, I, it's 3.5 three inch because this on this exhaust diameter, the engine made very good amount of horsepower, super amount of torque, naturally aspirated. That's why I kept it this big. No catalytic converter because I want to keep the engine simple. Because using catalytic converters, you, that, mean, that means you will have O2 sensors and you will have uh, and the ECU will control the air fuel ratio, which, which means uh, any time that sensor, the auto sensor, goes go wrong, or any time the air fuel ratio will get wrong, you will have like a, an error code. The check engine light will come on, and it will be an expensive fix. That's why I kept it very simple: no catalytic converter and uh, direct fuel injection. So the the developers will will program the ECU to run. Um, to run different kind of method to control the air fuel ratio without the use of air fuel uh, without the use of O2 sensors and catalytic converters to keep it very simple very reliable uh, we have twin reverse flow mufflers as you can see so to keep the engine quiet plus 5 quality on the exhaust and this is the final result 255 and a half horsepower at 5800 rpm 305.4 pound feet of torque at 3600 rpm as you can see and that's my point here super reliable engine uh, efficient efficient engine very low octane rating yes i know the engine is a little bit heavy but no one cares it's a heavy duty engine it's a smooth engine actually 77.2 points it's a, respons a responsive engine that's very good it's a quiet engine that's even better and as you can see everything in the green everything is perfect so let's fire uh, fire it up, and you will have a little a little present actually, or a little gift when I start the engine. So please, uh, if you if you can raise the volume of your uh, of your computer of your mobile to listen to the idle sound. Ready, steady, and yes, it, this is a petrol engine, and it sounds like a diesel engine. And that is very awesome. At idle 700 RPM, it's, the engine is making 207 pound feet of torque. At idle, that's very good.
absolutely amazing. The engine is looking very balanced, very, very good looking and very, very, very reliable. So let's move on. I have chosen this 1985 pickup body. That's what that's what that's what Mr. David requested, and that's what he what, what he chosen. Plus one quality on the body and the fixture quality, and I've chosen this military looking like uh, very reliable, very dependable dark green military paint to give the car more uh, more aggressive look, and of course uh, to keep it to to keep it like bulky and muscly and heavy duty looking that's what i want with this car with this vehicle moving on these are the fixtures that i've chosen very simple fixtures as you can see square head headlights we have this square looking grip front grille fog lights another grill to keep the engine cool and reliable to keep the radiator uh, with the, uh, to, keep, to keep feeding the radiator cold amount uh, cold air from the from the front to keep the engine cool and reliable we have the front license plate holder although on the when the apocalypse comes this would not be this would not be any kind of uses it will, it will be useless to it will be very very useless but since this car will be driven today and of course you need to have a license plate so the police won't stop you this this right now it's a good idea but in the future well no one need this uh, we have a front as you can see antenna regular antenna uh, for for if you want to run a radio, if you want to run, if you want to, what what do you call this? Like it's it's not a walkie-talkie system. What do you call them? Uh, like in the U.S. in the in the U.S.A. they they have a special name for it. Uh, please tell me what's the name of? Uh, it's it's like a walkie-talkie system, but they they bolt it inside the cabin inside, and they use like uh, some kind of a, some kind of device. They push a button. It's it's like what what the police use. To speak with you with each other, uh, I don't remember the exact name for it. It's some kind of something radio, yes. And they use like an, a special antenna so they can communicate with each other. So this is actually like a, a special feature in this car. If you want to hook that 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 special kind of a radio to to communicate with other uh, commuters, like other truck drivers, or maybe in the future when the apocalypse comes, and if you want to communicate with uh, with your fellows, with your fellow survivors. Uh, what else we have? We have these side indicators. Well, they will be broken in the future because a zombie will come and just will just ram this and broke the bulb. But since we are driving the car today, you need to have side indicators for uh, legal purposes. Side mirrors, as you can see, bulky ones, big ones. Uh, very heavy duty uh, door handles, as you can see, with uh, with with keyholes. Uh, we have a uh, a fuel filler cap, a side indicator, and the as you can see the tail lights, square ones, regular uh, heavy duty ones. Of course, a handle for the tailgate, and the rear logo. We have the these uh, reflectors, red reflectors for the high for a highway use, and of course the license plate holder, and of course the side twin pipes for the exhaust system. So the car is very normal, nothing special here. Very very heavy duty, very very reliable. And very very efficient so let's move on we have long ditch wall 4x4 drive type manual gearbox because of course for obvious reasons because it's the most reliable option here uh, five ratios five speeds uh, the final drive is 6.12 to 1 and it can go like 202.5 kilometers per hour 81 on the spacing because this is a utility vehicle and as as a utility vehicle you need a, a super a super high or super big spacing or high spacing for the gearbox uh, let's see what else we have manual locker differentials if you want to go off-road you can lock the wheels or the differentials we have a zero quality here radial chunky off-road tires 245 uh, that is the tire width front and rear 850 is the tire diameter with of course 15 inch rims zero offset steel rims because these are the, the most heavy duty options on this car with zero quality we have a ventilated front disc six pistons 300 millimeters is the front uh, front disc rotors and of course we have uh, the same go the same for the reason uh, the sorry, sorry the same for the rears uh, we have ventilated disc three pistons 250 millimeters 61 on the pad type and 61 percent of the brakes go, go going to the front 39 percent going to the rear 
zero quality we have an off-road skid tray because of course when you are going off-roading you don't want to scratch the radiator from the front you don't want to damage the engine so you'll have so you'll have an off-road skid tray on the front it will provide it will provide good amount of downforce to keep the car efficient on highways and of course it will, it will protect it will protect the radiator and well very important components of the engine in the front uh, cooling flaps also the cooling flaps will be installed here in the front and on this front grille uh, a cooling cooling flaps will means I mean yes of course this is not a reliable option but in in the future in the apocalypse you can just uh, you can just uh, remove them you can just you know uh, unbolt the unbolt the screws and just remove the device because cooling flaps that means we have a flaps in the front which they are controlled by an actuator when the engine overheats or when the engine gets a little bit hot these actuators will open to allow air into the engine and when when the engine is cold these flaps will close to provide like a warm uh, engine compartment to warm the engine quicker in the winter and to make the car more aerodynamics although the car is very square but it's for, the, for an obvious reason uh, cooling uh, for the engine cooling is 60 which is more than usual but this is 60 because I want to it the engine to, to remain cool not to overheat and that will make the car much more reliable 100 on the brake airflow the same reasons zero quality since we have a single cab I want to I want to push I want to put a lot of people in it so the maximum number is three because it's a bench so three persons can sit in it in the front with uh, on, on a basic normal interior no, normal basic uh, seat nothing special basic everything basic CD uh, ray entertainment system with a radio of course if you want to if you want to know what comes in these packages you can pause the video right now and read what comes with the basic interior and you can pause the video right now to read what comes with the basic CD entertainment system zero quality <coughs> We have, we have variable variable hydraulic power steering although if I want to keep the car more more uh, uh, more reliable I, c I can just run it without power steering but since this is a, an off-road vehicle it's like a big heavy pickup truck it will be extremely extremely hard to move the front tires without power steering so variable hydraulic seems the best option here electronic stability control for obvious reason, I want to keep the car very safe, very normal, uh, very normal, and very, very cool. So anyone can buy it, and anyone can trust driving it without any problems. So electronic stability control seems very, 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 very legit and very cool. Basic, uh, as you can see, basic 2000s uh, safety equipments because I want to keep it simple, light, and safe at the same time. This is not bad. This is this is not a bad option at all with zero quality. We have a progressive springs. Uh, gas mono tube dampers, off-road sway bars with a pretty much custom suspension setup. Of course, no camber because we have solid axles. Uh, 2.80 is the front spring uh, uh, stiffness, 2.60 the rear damper stiffness, 1.80 in the front, 1.20 in the rear. Sway bar thickness, 2,800 in the front, 2,000 on the rear. With maxed out 509.8 millimeters is the ride height and zero quality. So these are the options on the car and these are the, all of the results as you can see uh, these are the options of the engine the body everything is normal so the test track as you can see the car weighs 1956.8 uh, kilograms which is nearly two tons um, it's very obvious it's a, it's a it's a truck made of steel power to weight ratio pretty normal uh, towing capacity is very great actually you can tow two tons behind you you can put 1.7 tons of cargo uh, in, in the back which is very very useful no brake fading whatsoever which is perfect stopping distance for a pickup truck also not bad uh, top speed 202 kilometers per hour 0 to 100 time in 8.7 8.7 seconds uh, let's see quarter mile in 16.62 no one cares this is a survival vehicle let's go to the market as you can see the car is drivable it's uh, it has normal comfortable points to it it's prestigious which is very very actually very weird although this is a basic truck but prestigious point not bad so it's a car, the car as i mentioned is is safe which is good the car is practical it has very good utility points and 90 on the off-road 
so it's a perfect it's a very 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 perfect car to go off-roading actually it's very reliable which is what I want extremely reliable uh, environment resisting also 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 very great so it will not rust but this is a actually a little bit of a major problem nine miles per gallon I mean I tried to make the car light using light advanced high strain steel for the chassis corrosion resisting steel but the car managed to get very very heavy and that resulted in a thirsty car of course the engine it's not really efficient it's only 14% on the efficiency but yeah 9 miles per gallon emissions no one cares uh, octane 80 octane fuel very good engineering time very good production units takes a little while but the car really deserves it and as you can see with 10% margin it will cost it $26,848 which is super cheap so as you can see in the test track well there's no point of driving it around the test track because it's very slow obviously one minute 46.24 I already ran the car but we can run it again and see if this number will change or not So as you can see, as I mentioned, it's still slow, 1 minute 46.32, so it's not a super car, it's not a fast car, this is not, a, it's not a car even, it's a truck, this is not a sporty truck, it's a survival truck, and as you can see, it's very good, it's very reliable, it can go off-road, it can go over anything, as you, as you, as you saw, where is it, um, market, yes, as you can see, 90 points, 90, so you can go absolutely anywhere. It's very utility, as you can see, utilitarian. It's very reliable. It's practical. It's drivable. It's not hard to drive. I mean, yes, if I want to make it easy to drive, I can offer like an automatic version of it. But as an automatic transmission, it will go bad eventually. Even if it was super reliable, like the the Chevy Turbo 300, Turbo 350, or whatever transmission used by Chevy in the olden days. I mean, those were extremely reliable, but even even if the gearbox an automatic gearbox is super reliable it will go bad eventually i mean i promise you it will go bad but as a uh, but as a manual gearbox the only thing that will go bad in it is the, maybe the shifter and the clutch that's it the clutch maybe maybe the flywheel if you are driving the clutch like like an like a, i'm not going to say the, a curse word but you know what i mean if you if you are driving the car yeah in a bad way if you're, man if you're managing the clutch in a bad way, yes, you can damage the clutch. That's very obvious. But I mean, as a as a as an experienced driver, and of course, in the when the when the apocalypse comes, this is a mo the most reliable option you can have. Everything is made from cast, so it will never go bad. 
normal exhaust system, normal engine block, everything is cast iron, so yes, it's super reliable, super torquey, and super good. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I know this has been a very, very long video, but if you are wondering what, how much time it will take to run this car around the test track, no, I'm not gonna run the whole time. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just gonna start it and stop. Yes, nearly 3 minutes, 2 minutes 55.83, which is super slow. But let me start it again and uh, skip and uh, increase the playback speed so much so, I can, so we can reach this straight line because I want, I'm wondering how it, will, how it will react in a straight line. So let's see. Very very good actually 193 kilometers per hour nearly the top speed that is very very nice you can reach top speed easily it will never take it, it won't take long actually to reach the top speed of this truck which is very very awesome I, I, I always hate to see trucks that you, you put your foot hard down like especially like 90s trucks and yeah early 2000s trucks like four Chevys I'm not gonna mention the name, I'm not, I'm not gonna say which model because I don't want anyone to hate what I'm saying, but you know what I mean, you know which version, you know which model I'm talking about, especially in Chevys, Fords, uh, you put your foot down and the engine screams and that automatic and uh, transmission, oh my god, it will never never ever reach its top speed, even if you're driving like a thousand miles straight line, it will never reach because of the aerodynamics, because of the engine is low on power, Mm, yeah, you get the point. It will never reach the top speed. But this one, although this is a game, not a real thing, but it, it's a simulation game. So I'm, I'm, I really can, I really cannot wait for the 13th of July so I can drive this survival truck in in beam.ng. beam.ng.drive game so I can enjoy throwing it around, trying it, and uh, maybe maybe rock crawl in it with it go off-road with it, try it on on dirt tracks, it'll be really awesome. So thank you so much guys for watching and thank you so much Mr. David Hamilton for your requested video, I hope that you like it and I hope that you like the guys too. So please tell me what you think about this survival pickup truck in the comment section below. And as I mentioned when I started making the video, if you want to request a video, you need to add my Snapchat so I can add you on the Snapchat group, on the channel group on Snapchat. Uh, you need to add my username which is lordbas94, lordbas94, and I will add you immediately. So thank you so much for watching, my throat is starting to hurt and I need to finish now, so have an amazing, have an amazing Sunday I hope, and um, good luck with all of your, um, with all of your re weekend routine or whatever you, whatever you are doing and have an amazing evening or day or night or whatever time you are watching the video. And goodbye for now, my friends.